All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and we've been going over web development and design foundations with HTML5, 8th edition by Terry Felk Morris. We're up to chapter 8 of 14. Chapter 8 is all about HTML tables. And let me just tell you, before I even start on that, I'm going to go and take everything that I did in the last chapter, and I'm going to comment it out. So right now, with the web page that we've been working with, as you can see, there's not too much in there. All right? And I'll even remove the menu and whatever else is in there. I'll get that out too. And the, uh, the background image. So to get off the menu and the background image, someplace in here we have the background image. There it is. Oops. So that should take care of that. Okay, we just got to remove <clears throat> the little bit that we have right here. And then we're starting with more or less a clean slate. And there is that. So we will take our nav and we will also comment that out. So now at long last, we are at a blank page. It's got a great background, but it's fine. Okay, so in chapter eight, we have very few objectives because this is a short chapter. Create a basic table with table, table row, table header, and table cell elements, typically called table data elements. Add some more configurations to the table by putting in a T head, T body, and T foot elements. Learn how to, incre to increase table accessibility. Style an HTML table with CSS. And finally, describe the purpose of CSS structural pseudoclasses. And let me just tell you what I decided to do, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. is I've got, these are a bunch of people who work at Rankin Technical College. They're not put in any kind of order or anything else, but I'm going to use them, whoops, I'm going to use them in this chapter for helping to build the table. All right, so I'm going to literally, before I put them in there, I'm going to comment everything out. So that's all their information. Don't worry about it because, like I said, we'll be building the table very incrementally and ideally at least. As we do that, you're going to look at it and say, oh, that makes sense, that makes sense, etc. All right, so you can see what we have in here right now, okay? And we'll work on that a little bit more later on. So tables, the big thing is tables are meant for tabular data. A table looks very much like a spreadsheet. It's composed of rows and columns where rows go across horizontally. So there is one row of data, Jack, 513, 857, 555, 5555, and there is one column of data, name, Jack, and Sparky. So each cell is the intersection of a specific row and column. The main difference between a table and a spreadsheet is when you count with spreadsheets, the rows uh, are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc., and the columns are A, B, C, etc., where here they're both numbers. All right, so we're going to configure a table in just a minute or start to with table TR and TD elements. So this is what a table is made up of. So rather than right now, I'm just going to start to put things in there just so you can see what I'm talking about. So Let's come in and actually start working on this. 
Okay, so I'm going to come in here. I've got my data up there, and I'm going to say um, there we go. So I'm going to put in my table, and tables are put in between table tags. All right, and the first thing I'm going to have in the table is I'm going to have a caption, which will go at the top. And it'll just say employees of Rankin Technical College. So right now that's the only thing we put in the table. Let's see what we have, if anything. Okay, employees of Rankin Technical College. Don't worry that it looks the way it does, etc. Right now it's no big thing. We're going to fix it. All right. So that's what we have so far. So what we have put in there, what we have put in there is a caption. It's a description of the table. All right. And since it was a little hard to read, let's just change it to employees. Or how about this? RTC employees, right? For Rankin Technical College. RTC employees. This will look a lot nicer. Now when we go and run this, and we refresh, looks a lot nicer. Okay, so that's our title. All right, the next thing, as it says, the next thing that we should have in there, we've got the table tag, which delineates or begins and ends our table, and so far we put a caption in there. Okay, tables are made up of rows, and rows are made up of data. Well, there's also another thing in here that before we can get to, to data, so let's make a row. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna put every field that we had in here. I tell you what, I'll put in the first name, the last name, and the middle initial for now. We'll just put that in. Okay, all right. So we're going to come in here, and we're going to say inside of that table, first thing we're gonna have is a table row tr tag. So there's the beginning and there's the ending tr tag, and inside of there we're gonna have three headings: a table heading. It's going to say first name, a table heading that's going to say MI for middle initial, and a table heading that's going to say last name. Now this may end up not looking the way that you think it'll look, but let's take a look. So I'm building this very incrementally. All right, so there's our table. Let's refresh. Okay, first name, middle, initial, last name. So right now it doesn't look very nice. Well, one thing we haven't done with our table is we haven't put a border in there. Once you put in a border, it starts to take, a, take on the look and feel much more of a spreadsheet. So I'm going to say in here, border equal one. I just want to put a one pixel border in there. Now, looks a little bit better. It's delineated a little bit better. Okay. So I've got my headings in there, all right? So now we have to start putting in information. Well, I know that the first table row is me, all right? So that is going to hold three pieces of data. The first name, TD for table data, Jeffrey. The middle initial, P, Paul, if you've wondered. And the last name, Scott. Okay, so that's our first row of data. And hopefully, now it's starting to look a little bit more like a real table. Okay, now to, to try to speed this up a little bit, I'm going to, for lack of better words, I'm going to come in here and uh, let's see. There's 10 employees in here, so what I'll do for now is I'll just have me in there 10 times and we'll quickly make some changes to it. Oops. Now, right now when you look at it, it just looks like I'm the only employee and I'm in there 10 times, which looks a little bit ridiculous. Okay, but we're going to change that in just a minute. Okay. <clears throat> 
Paul David Charles Ebinger. <coughs> Now I've changed first four or five records that are in here. I don't want to keep doing this if I, I, I will finish it, but what I'm going to do, because we now have one, two, three, four, five employees in here correctly, is I'm going to quickly pause this and I want to put in the other records just so they're in there so you can see them. All right, so let me pause the tape. All right, so I took a couple minutes and I put all the right information in there. So now if we look at it, we now have a realistic table. Now I can put more fields in there, but that isn't what's important right now. What was important to me was to quickly create a table so I can talk about what's in there and I can talk about it with you. All right, so tables consist of table rows. Table rows consist of either table headings or table data, and tables can also have captions. The table tag delineates the beginning and the end of the table. The TR tag is the beginning of a table row, slash TR is the end of a table row. TD is the beginning of a table data, slash TD is the end of that table data. TH is the beginning of a table header, slash TH is the end of a table header. <clears throat> Caption configures a uh, a table caption or description and slash caption ends it. So here is the one that they made in, in the book. So this is the one that they used, bird sightings, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But again, very similar to what I had. Table with border equal one so that you have the grid lines. Caption, so you have the caption. TR, everything's within TR tags. Now they're not showing the TD tags yet here. They're putting the name and the date. These, they're putting these headings in as regular table data tags. One advantage that I have with what I did is when you use table data tags, and it's kind of hard to tell looking at this, but these are bolded. TH tags are automatically bolded. Another table example, okay? Here they have the headings in there, and you can hopefully see a little better how these are bolded, okay? Now, when you put data into a table, alpha data is automatically left justified. Numeric data, and that's not numeric, but numeric data is automatically right justified. So here are some things you can do with tables, some attributes. You notice that out of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that are listed there, Six of the seven are obsolete. What that means is rather than using these HTML table attributes, you should instead use Cascading Style Sheets, CSS, to configure tables. And we'll look at that in just a minute. Some more table cell attributes. And again, you'll notice that many of those, many of those are obsolete. In fact, other than cow span and row span, everything else in there is either obsolete or deprecated. Not even sure what the difference between the two are. All right. I think obsolete just literally means they haven't been used in years. Again, we use CSS whenever possible. All right, so there is an example of a column span. Okay, so what if we wanted to do this?
let, let's just say that rather than first name and last name, or first name, middle initial, and last name, which is what I have up here, okay, let's say that instead I want to do a column span of three and put in something like complete name. Okay, so we'll change this to complete name. And I'm going to take these two out of there, save it, come back to the table, okay? And you notice now it says complete name. And it's what it is, is that is one row that is spanned over three different columns. Now, is that better? Well, it's, it, it's, it is what it is. So you can look at that right there, and then I can come back here. I think what I'll do, I'll just take this, and I'm going to comment it out. So in case I want to put it back in there later, I'll be able to. And we'll just come in, and we'll put in our three TH tags again. Which, again, we had first name, middle initial, Let's name. All right. So you can judge whether this looks better or this looks better. All right. And it really, in the bottom, the mainstream of things, it really doesn't matter very much. One thing I want to mention is I couldn't find a middle initial for Mr. Corrigan. So rather than leave that blank, I actually filled it up with an HTML entity. N ampersand NBSP stands for non-breaking space. It literally means a blank space. It's like you hit the space bar once. And it is recommended that rather than leaving the cell blank, which is what we would have done otherwise, that we put in at least a non-breaking space, which is why I did that. Are bad things going to happen if you don't? No. But what can happen if you don't is the table can look a little funky. Okay. All right. Not only is there a column span, there is a row span. Okay. So notice with the example that they put in here. Let's, let's use their example because I'm going to get rid of it right away anyway. So at the beginning of our table, whoops, at the beginning of our table, so right at the beginning, let's say that uh, even before we put in, eh, I guess it's going to look a little funky, but after we put in the heading, we'll put in this, okay, so this is not going to look good at all, but it's all right. See how what, this, what can end up happening here? Things can get kind of out of whack or off kilter or whatever. The problem is I didn't have a third column in there. So let's put one in. Okay, so we've got row one, column two. And let's put in row one, column three. Let's see if that makes it look a little better. Okay, so we've got that now, and since this spanned, okay, two rows, just ends up looking funky. Can I try to fix it? Sure, there's things I can do. For instance, I could try. I don't know if this will work or not. It probably won't, but I could come in here and, let's see, let's put in another That's going to be data. Let's copy that.
again, I don't know. I may be going from bad to worse here. There you go. All right. Again, a kind of a silly example, but just so you see it. It says, for accessibility reasons, you should use TH tags. Well, I have been from the beginning. For complex tables, you can associate tags with their corresponding headers if you want to do that. So let's let's use their example that they, whoops, the example that they have in here. Okay? So we'll put in their table. I've already shown you mine. And whether it's a good table or a bad table is something you can figure out for yourself. But okay, so it's pretty long, if nothing else. So let's put this in. Whoops, what happened there? Oh, okay. I think it's because I've got comments here. Here. Yep. All right, so I commented out my entire table, and now we've got the books table. So let's see what, the, what happens when we run the books table. There we go. So you can see we've got name, and that spans two columns, Baba Link, which spans two columns, Upland Sandpiper, which spans two columns, and Date, which is one column. Now, the reason I put that in there is because notice we've got IDs set up for each one of these. There's IDs. And it also says that this Baba link is goes with the table header that's called name. This 525.10 goes with the header that's named date and the same type of thing here. So what we're doing is we're sending signals to the browser as far as what goes with what. Okay, all right, using CSS to style a table. These are some of the things that you can do with a table. Double check and make sure I turn the light back on. I did. So again, these are some of the things that you can do with a table. You can align a table left, right, or center. You can play with the background color. You can do cell padding, cell spacing, height, vertical alignment, width, border. You can even set a background image. All right. So again, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to grab all of this. That's what I want right there. Copy that. And I'm going to come into my CSS file. All right. Let me open up some room here. And for a table. I'm just going to paste that in. I was going to try to paste it in, but for some reason I lost it. Copy. Paste. It's not pasting. All right, I don't have to manually do it then. Align BG color cell padding. Align BG color cell padding. What else do we have here? Okay, cell padding is one word. Cell spacing, height, v-align, and width. Notice how it recognizes some of the words here. All right. And border. I'm not going to worry about background image, okay? So we'll put border in here also. And let's do this. Let's let's do these one at a time. All right. So I'm going to comment out all these, and I'll comment them back in again. 
as we add them. So align, let's make this right aligned and hopefully that's what will happen. Not a thing happened. Table, margin, well let's try what they have here. With 75% margin auto. Let's try that and see if that centers it on the screen. Okay. So the width, 75%, the margin, auto. And again, we're going to see if that changes anything. There you go. Okay. Now, again, don't worry about this. I'm just trying to show you some of the things that we can conceivably at least change. How about the background color of the table? Oh, we can also align. We can also say text align. And we can center that inside of here also. Yeah, I was going to say these are the ones that I should be using. Okay, so I shouldn't, I mean, BG color doesn't mean anything, so I should be using here background color or just background. Okay. Let's see if that made the background of our table red. And you can see it did. All righty. Next is cell padding, which is just padding. Let's put... Let's put padding all around it. In fact, let's put 10 pixels all the way around it. Okay, and you saw it right there. There's the 10 pixels. Margin, on the other hand, let's cut down the margin. We had put in their margin auto, but let's put in five pixels auto, which means the top and bottom should be at five pixels and the left and right should be centered if I did that correctly. Didn't really change anything. How about this? Five pixels, ten pixels. All right, it's going to look different. It's not going to be centered like it was, probably. Okay. All right, what else do we have here? Cell spacing. Cell spacing is done with border spacing or border collapse. I'm not going to worry about that. Let's do the height, though. We'll do the height and the width. V-align isn't used that often, but let's use, let's do height, width, and border. All right. So we'll say height. And we'll say 50 pixels. Width. We'll make it a, a square table. We'll also be 50 pixels. And let's give it a border. We already gave it a border up above, but let's change the, that border. So for now, I'll tell you what, let's, let's comment it out because we'll have to remove the other one. But let, let's see with what we've done here. Let's see if we've made it look any different. Okay, and you can see we have quite, quite dramatically. All right, we've cut down the size. Okay.
as far as border, remember, when we set that up, we can put something like this in. How about three pixels, yellow, and dotted as an example. This will probably look really bad, but there you go. The big thing is over the years, I'm not, I, I, I gotta watch how I say this, but in a way at least, tables have fallen out of favor. And what I mean by that is web developers used to use tables for literally everything. In fact, many web developers who created their own HTML templates put everything in a table and put tables within tables within tables, etc. But today, tables should only be used literally for tabular data, for data that would belong in a table. All right, these structural pseudo classes, these are going to be make more sense when we go into some of the stuff later on in the semester. But you'll notice that they're, you typically say first or last. First meaning that if I have a whole bunch of, let's say I've got, I've got list items. Let's say I've got 10 list items. If I do first, I'm going to get the first list item. If I do last, I'm going to get the last list item. If I say the nth, okay, then I'm going to end up uh, being able to apply it to a certain number, whatever number I want. Okay. All right. Let's go back. Let's let's whoops. Let's grab this zebra striping so you can see what that looks like almost finished with the chapter here. I'm going to change this. Our background was red. Let's make our background white. All right. And forget about that border. All right. And we're going to add this. Right? And what this literally says is we want every other table row to be colored. Now, you might be surprised at what happens here when we take a look at it. So let's bring this up and notice which one changed. Okay. We asked for the evens, and you might say, well, that is even. No, one, two, three. No, this is number one. This is number two. All right. And the, the, the odds and evens, etc., that's in here, it's a little bit funky. Let's do this to try to, to have you really be able to see this. Okay, we're going to leave all the stuff in here that we had. Okay, everything. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take their table and I'm going to comment it out. Oops. And I'm going to take my table and comment uncomment it. All right, so we're going to take that one out where we had taken that out there. Okay, the only thing I do want is I want to get rid of this call span and row span. We don't really need them. We don't need this line that says full name. And we don't need this row span. You've now seen how that works, so I'm going to get rid of that. So I want this to actually look more reminiscent of what a real table would look like. All right, so watch the magic. All right. And what you see right here, again, it looks like well, you know, there's one, two, three, four. Five. No, this is one. So if, if we did evens, why would why would the row one why would row one be a different color? And the answer is that isn't row one, it's row zero. So this is row zero, row two, row four, row six, row eight. Okay? Just so you're aware of that. All right, as we work our way to the end of the chapter. You can also group things. So if you look at the example, what's important here is we can put what's called a T head around our heading stuff. 
a T body around our body stuff and then put a footer at the bottom and put a T foot in there. Okay? And again, it's grouping that you may decide to do. It'll hopefully make more sense when we go over that in the chapter. All right? So in this chapter, we talked about table basics. We looked at how to create a table. We looked at the table tag, the caption tag, the table header tag, the table data tag, and the table row tag. Okay? We looked at how you would configure using T head, T body, and T foot. And I can grab that and put it in there if we want. We talked about table accessibility. We looked a little bit at how to style a table with CSS. And we looked, looked at those structural pseudo classes, which we'll talk about in more depth and breadth of coverage later on in the semester. Let me grab all this just so you can see that once I do, Once I come in here and paste all that in, okay, I'm not sure what that dot, dot, dot is, but let's save it, try to run it, and see if it looks like it did in the book. We got a timesheet there, okay, and in the book, it looks like this. Those dot, dot, dots are kind of screwed up. They're right there. All right, and I believe they're screwed up because they use some CSS to put those in. I'm not going to worry about it. All right, in the next chapter, we're going to go over forms. So as always, I'm going to take all of this stuff that I just put in there, and it'll all be commented out. And when I come back in just a couple minutes, I'll be talking about HTML forms. See you then.